Welcome to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, Ask Judy. Uh, today I'm going to be taking some of your questions and answering them. If you are enjoying these, please do like and subscribe and share them with other people. So one of my first questions here is from Jerry, who asks, uh, if you haven't already, maybe you could do a video sharing some memories of the Reed twins. You seem to have such a rapport with them playing their mother, and they were as adorable, so adorable as little John Curtis. It's true. Um, we actually used a number of different uh, children over the first beginning of um, when John Curtis was born. So when we first did the grandchild, when John Curtis was born, that was uh, newborns or as close to newborns as possible. Typically, newborns are played by babies that are, you know, just maybe three to five weeks old. Um, so they're not days old, but you know, uh, so that's what um, what we would have been working with when we did the grandchild. Um, the casting directors have various different resources to to find infants, you know, parents that are willing to allow their newborns, especially twins, uh, to work. So they use those sources, and when something's going to be filming that needs uh, infants or even older twins, then they put things out on their on their lines and and there are you know parents that are willing to let their children be in show business. As John Curtis was just a little bit older, I think we went through two or three different um, different infants that that we used when John Curtis was very young. And then from the time he was a toddler, we had Michael and Marshall Reed, who were with us all the way through the through the nine seasons. I know it's the question has been raised about what happened to John Curtis in the reunion movies. And as I have said before, for some reason, and I'm not sure all the reasons behind it, how much of it was budgetary. You know, they, they only have so much budget when they're when they're doing something. And of course, the priority is to have all of the original cast members back. So all of the original Walton children and uh, John Boy and Mama and Daddy and Ellen when she was able to. So those would have been the first priorities for the budget. And then uh, secondarily would have been any additional cast, uh, which would have included potential spouses or uh, uh, Corbeth and Ike, um, the Baldwin sisters. So some of those recurring characters that were there for quite some time. And then children are always more challenging just because of the restrictions of, of time and having to have teachers on set. So I think there may have been some things with that where they just went, oh, you know, it's a lot of children to deal with. So we'll just sort of fudge that. But I also think it was dealing with writers who weren't as familiar with the history of the show. So they didn't know the history of all the children. So I think in some cases they just didn't realize that they were leaving children out. And if they did know, they chose not to, either the producers or the writers or collectively, they chose not to explain why children weren't there and literally said, well, we don't think anyone will notice. I don't know why they do some of these things. As actors, we really are kind of, uh, we can express things. We can say, we can raise questions about things that we spot, but doesn't mean that we have any kind of pull for things to be changed. So we do the best we can and we did voice it. So I'm sorry that nobody listened to us. <laughs> anyway, but Michael and Marshall Reed were there for, for the nine seasons and they were, they, were, they were a lot of fun. They were very sweet. Uh, to be able to work with them all the time like I needed to, I spent a lot of time with them on set because like a lot of children, they were most comfortable with who they were most familiar with. Uh, typically their aunt brought them to set uh, because if their mother was there, they just wanted to be with her and I understand that. So if she was there and they saw her, then they would cry because they couldn't go to her. Their aunt, uh, they were also obviously very familiar with and preferred to be with her to somebody else, but they were more willing to 
leave their aunt than they were to leave their mother. So typically the aunt brought them. And then if I was going to be working with them, I would take whichever one I was working with because we would we would have each one for, I think, four hours. So which Michael or Marshall, whichever one was there for the first four hours, um, I would often just kind of babysit. So rather than doing a take and then handing handing him back to his aunt and then having to take him away again, I would just kind of hang with him. So between scenes or, you know, between takes or whatever, maybe at the end of the scene, I would, I would um, take him back to his aunt until we were ready for him to film again. Uh, so I got drooled on and, and they would give him like peppermint candies, red and white, and they'd end up on my white nurse's uniform. I'd be, oh great, I have like pink drool on my uniform. But you know, it was great introduction to motherhood for real. Um, but I wanted them to be familiar enough with me that they would be comfortable working with me. And that I thought if I was the most familiar person, then they might want to go to me. And then of course, Elizabeth worked with them a lot, Cammy, So uh, she would spend time with them and, and Michael when she was there, mama, she would. And uh, so those of us who, who worked with them, they got they got familiar enough with us that they were fine. I always thought that Ralph, Ralph Waite was just adorable with them and he would have such fun with them. And people have pointed out a point when there was something about um, something they were wearing and, and he asked where where it was from and he said, Pat. And, and he's like, oh, is that, you know, is that a friend or something? Um, I think uh, and I could be wrong. Somebody who knows for sure, please remind me. Um, I think Pat was the name of their aunt. Um, and so she may have dressed them in whatever that item of clothing was. Um, so we, you know, so I spent a lot of time with, with the twins and, and uh, did develop um, a fun relationship with them. They were, yes, they, they were remarkable to work with for the years. So we were very fortunate. So there you go. That's what I can tell you about Michael and Marshall Reed. Once the series ended, I did not see them until 2012 when we had a Walton reunion out here in Los Angeles for, I believe it was like the, it would have been the 40th anniversary of, of the Waltons. And a lot of different um, guest stars from over the years came and attended that. And Michael and Marshall came in. They're all grown up, very handsome um, young men. And so it was really fascinating to see them. Of course, they remember nothing about it. I, I often wonder how much they watch the show and and if they have any recollection of any of that. I don't think they really do because they were so young. So it was it was great to see my my grown boys. That's what I have for you for this episode of Ask Judy about John Curtis. So I will see you next time on another Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and another Ask Judy. So keep those, those questions coming and I will take up more of your questions. In the meantime, thanks for watching.